graduate program, they're paying attention to the deadlines on their page as well um, to make sure that all the documentation is in on time and that they're able to review it by the deadline. And like some programs, only, graduate programs, only accept for the fall and don't accept for the spring. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, so now it's it's close to the five thirty one here. Uh, it's we okay. have time, but again I will wait for two and three minutes more because sometimes the students download the software. It take two three minutes, five minutes to them. So another two three minutes I will uh, do the broadcasting. All right, and once the broadcasting will the go to webinar control panel will that disappear? Uh, uh, what you can do that you can see the arrow. Uh, you can click the arrow there, which can go there, and you can see your full screen. Then you can see the arrow, uh, left and right arrow. Uh, the about the mic. one about the mic. Yeah, red one. Yeah, orange one. Yeah. Yeah. You can do. You can use that one. Okay, it's not. Sorry. Let's see what this one does. Okay, well, none of them are really working, so I'll just move it to the bottom. Okay, okay. So no question for me, right? So everything is clear. I I feel like it is. This is my first time, so we'll either crash or burn. <laughs> yeah, or we'll do okay. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, um, have you visited India anytime? Or I have spent oh. a decent amount of time, like in Asia and in South Pacific and Australia, but I never made it over to India. My best friend actually went in December, though, and okay. she loved it. She's ready to move there. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, are you are you joining the ARC or ICF um, uh, conference this year uh, in the Miami? Which conference? Um, ICF and AIRC. I don't think so. Okay. I haven't Good. heard anything about it. We usually go to NAFSA though. Okay, okay, okay. Because myself and uh, my partner, he is coming um, uh, in Miami this November and December. Two conferences are there. So we are joining okay. there. So we thought, okay, if otherwise we can meet up there also. I think we are on time, I guess, now. So, uh, can I broadcast this one? Yeah, yeah. You just tell me when I need to start. <laughs> sure, sure. I will just let. I will introduce you, and then I will tell you to speak up, and then you can start it from your end. Okay. okay, sounds good. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yeah, hi, hello, student. This is Abhishek from Study Metro. Thank you very much for joining this webinar again. So today uh, we have the guest. Uh, from the California State University, and uh, uh, she's uh, Brittany Fentress. Uh, she's uh, deal with the international students recruitment, especially whoever is joining for the undergraduate undergraduate program. So thank you very much to signing up this webinar. Uh, today we are going to cover the, all the informations about the international students requirement in the school. Also, what are the programs we offered? How many intakes we have? The tuition fees and uh, campus there's so many things are coming up in the next 30 30 minutes webinar uh, and then we have a question answer for 50 to 20 minutes so please uh, feel free to ask any questions during the webinar you have you can see the chat chat box window in your right hand side and the go to webinar control panel please type your questions uh, so that i can cover all the questions in the end of the webinar so I, I just ask uh, our delegates to speak up now to start with the uh, presentations so that you can know about uh, more about this school. Thank you very much. Betty, you can speak now. All right, thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Um, my name is Brittany Fentress, and I am the Internet Missions and Services Coordinator at California State University Stanislaus. 
If you apply to our university, I will most likely be your first point of contact and will be helping you with the admission process. California State University Stanislaus is fondly referred to as Stan State. It is located in the heart of California. Stan State is, is an affordable public campus that feels like a private college. Its scenic, park-like setting is covered with trees and waterfalls providing a peaceful retreat. Stan State offers an all-encompassing experience, safe, friendly, personalized attention, and a solid, reputable degree. Stan State is a wonderful option for students who want to study in an environment that is conducive to learning with easy access to attentive faculty and staff. Um, at Stan State, our classes are small with a student-faculty ratio of 22 to 1 and average class size is approximately 30 students. Um, and because of that small environment, Students are not just a number, they become a member of the community and they're able to interact with their faculty member, uh, typically on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, our campus is safe and our student services are abundant. The campus is located in the charming city of Turlock, which enjoys a year-round mild climate. Um, the average high temperature is approximately 24 degrees Celsius and the low is 11 degrees Celsius. Stan State is very centrally located in California, and we are within driving distance to San Francisco, Yosemite National Park, Santa Cruz, Monterey, Silicon Valley. Um, you can still drive to Los Angeles or San Diego. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's a great weekend trip and totally doable. All right, so why choose Stan State? It is one of 23 campuses in the nationally respected California State University system. The cost of attending Stan State is half the cost of private university and one-third the price of UC schools. U.S. News & World Report ranked CSU Stanislaus as one of the top American public universities in the West and the best buy in higher education in terms of affordability. Money Magazine has ranked Stan State the number one public school our public university in the nation for helping students exceed expectations. The Princeton Review has ranked CSU Stanislaus as one of the best 380 colleges in the United States for 10 consecutive years. Um, the Office of International Education has, houses uh, Stan State's English language program which provides non-credit intensive English language training to meet the needs of our growing international student population. Small class size and highly trained teachers allows for a positive learning experience. The program enhances students' English proficiency and acclimates them to undergraduate and graduate coursework. In addition, the course prepares students for the test of English for, for the TOEFL, the test of English foreign language, which is required for admission. The English language program sessions are the same as the university session. So, if you participate in the English language program, it's going to have the same start date and the same end date as the undergraduate students, the graduate students, so there's not going to be any difference. Um, courses are five days a week, Monday through Friday, and begin typically at 8 a.m. and continue until approximately 3 p.m. So it's an all-day full instruction um, semester. Sorry. Um, the Residential Life Village is centrally located on campus near the University Union, dining hall, classrooms, laboratories, computer rooms, and libraries. Students may choose from a variety of living arrangements. There are four bedroom apartments and two and four bedroom suites. Each suite or apartment has a living room, bathroom, and one, two, or three person bedrooms, some with balconies overlooking a central courtyard. Apartments also include a full kitchen. The village is designed to provide a sociable, supportive living community with privacy and security for 700 residents. Amenities include study rooms, a TV lounge, recreation room, laundry facility, computer lab, two swimming pools, covered bike storage, two outdoor basketball courts, a volleyball court, and a 200-seat dining facility. 
the Residential Life Village strive to provide their residents with an environment conducive to their academic and personal success, grounded by the concepts of scholarship, leadership, citizenship, and relationship. Our goal is to provide our residents with a meaningful university experience that not only enriches their academic endeavors, but fosters the development of skills such as communication, critical thinking, and problem solving. To accomplish this, they provide their residents with a support team of professional staff, including a live-on professional and an academic and career advisor. Residents also have direct peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities through the experiences and knowledge of their resident assistants, peer academic leaders, and fellow residents. And from personal experience, I was able to do a tour of our on-campus housing last semester, and I currently live off campus within the walking distance from the university and the dining or the residential life village is really nice and really impressive for on-campus housing and it's got a great community feel there's a lot of activities and stuff that they do within the residential college or dorm and there's they have a laundry on site which is absolutely amazing with really nice washing machines and dryers and um, they don't require quarters where if you live off campus typically if your apartment has uh, a laundry you have to save your quarters and use them for laundry it's a really great facility and I highly recommend students live on campus at least their first year just so that they can get used to the campus they can meet other students and it's just a really great environment to be in and to help you get acclimated to the community. So campus, campus life at Stan State, we have a variety of activities. We have intramural sports, which are co-ed or single gender teams. The sports include volleyball, soccer, flag football, which is American football, but instead of tackling, you'll wear flags and your opponents will try and take the flags off you. We also have basketball and dodgeball. This semester is the first semester that the Office of International Education is actually to trying to develop their own team of international students to play together to represent you know, our community on campus for each sport. Um, we also have sports teams that are not intramural. So these are students that have come to Stan State with the purpose of playing sports and gaining an education and so students are able to get tickets to go to the games and support Stan State and support the players. Um, we have several international students that are actually on these teams and these teams are soccer, baseball and softball, track and field, tennis, golf, volleyball, cross country and basketball. The campus also has a variety of adventure outings and field trips. Some of these are done through the housing office, some of them are do, done through student organizations, and then even uh, the past two semesters our office have has organized um, a field trip to so far Yosemite and Monterey and we've taken a group of international students, students that have studied abroad and students that are participating in the English language program and we did a day trip and it was a lot of fun. Um, the student re recreation complex, it's uh, like a pretty much a gym where you can go and work out. They have classes and all students that enroll in Stan State are able to go there. It's included in your tuition and fees. We have student clubs and organizations, over a hundred different ones and last semester we started a, an international uh, student club and it's called Seven Islands Union and it's made up of international students and American students who have studied abroad or intend to study abroad and they have been organizing several activities on campus to promote diversity and it's a great group very enthusiastic and it's just a wonderful environment. There's also arts and cultural activities um, there's theater, there's an art gallery, there's music performances the actual town of Turlock also uh, sponsor different artists to come. Like we had the fair a couple weeks ago, and I think Kelly Pickler, who's a country music singer, uh, came and performed at the county fair. 
So we also have dining options on and off campus. Main Dining, Warrior Grill, and Pops are all on campus dining facilities. Uh, the main dining hall is cafeteria like. They've got a hotline, a pizza line, they've got all kinds of different options that you're able to choose from. The Warrior Grill is uh, more like a they have a lot of burgers and fries and stuff like that. Is actually a convenience store located on campus. So you can go there and get um, small items, things to keep in your room, stuff like that. But off campus, we have several pizza delivery options. Um, there's a diner, a Mexican restaurant, Vietnamese, plenty of fast food chains, a grocery store, and several pharmacies, all within walking distance of campus. And so it's great for students to access easily without cars and stuff like that. We also have uh, service learning and internship opportunities. Our campus has an office specifically dedicated to service learning. International students are also eligible to participate in CPT, which is curricular practical training. In order to apply for CPT, students must have been enrolled for one academic year and be enrolled during the semester of the internship that counts towards their major requirements. So if you're a business major and you're taking a business internship class, you would come to my office and talk to me and I would give you the paperwork and then you'd be able to work during that semester 20 hours. We'll talk about it when you get here, but um, you'll be able to do it during the fall, spring, or summer semester terms. And this is a beautiful picture of our beautiful bookstore. It is where students can purchase their textbooks. They can buy CSU stand apparel like hats, shirts, uh, pencils, anything they want. Uh, there's knickknacks, snacks, there's office and school supplies, and there's a small welcoming study space. It's a really great environment for students. So we have several support services on campus. We have several on-campus computer labs. There's a student testing center a student health center which I would just like to say they are absolutely amazing the things that they can do and they do it so affordably almost at nothing um, but depending on what you're going for there may be small fees but that should always be your first place to go if you're not feeling well on campus they do flu shots physicals x-rays blood test and affordable pharmacy. They have two observation rooms for students who need to be continually monitored and um, the staff is just great, warm, welcoming, very accommodating. We have like in the previous picture an on-campus bookstore, library, academic advising office, tutoring center, university police department and public safety, writing center, faculty mentor program, scholarship opportunities, and career services, which I highly recommend students go to when they're looking at possibly doing CPT or even applying for employment after they graduate. They'll help you review your resume, your cover letter, and um, they'll help you with advising for applying for jobs. They'll do mock interviews, things like that. So I definitely think that's a positive resource for students to be able to use. So undergraduate academic programs at Stan State, we have approximately 40 different majors for undergraduates with many of them specialized or having specialized emphasis. So it's not just you can choose business administration, but within that major you'll pick typically a com uh, concentration, which could be accounting, computer information systems, finance, general business, management, marketing, operations, management. So several of the different majors have situations like that. Um, so I'm going to list the majors for you guys because I know several of you might just be listening and may not be able to see our slideshow. Uh, cultural studies, anthropology, applied leadership, art, biological sciences, business administration, chemistry, child development, cognitive studies, computer science, criminal justice, economics, engineering. This is a joint program with University of Pacific. Uh, English, ethnic studies, gender studies, geography, geology, health sciences, history, kinesiology, liberal studies, mathematics, music, 
nursing. Uh, we have three different nursing options, philosophy, uh, physical sciences, physics, political science, psychology, social science, sociology, and then there's a special major in theater arts. So if you have, if any of these are majors that you're interested in, uh, you're welcome to contact me at the end of this PowerPoint. We'll have our contact information and we can follow up with questions on that. I would also like to state that for undergraduate students, we also have conditional admission. This is available for students who do, do not meet the minimum English proficiency requirement. Conditional admission is only available for undergraduate students. So this is another picture of our beautiful campus. On the left, you can see another angle of our bookstore. And then on the right is Science One Building. Its name is actually pretty deceiving because it says Science One, but there are areas of study done in that classroom building. Uh, variety, we have modern languages in there, there are psychology classes, and there are actually um, really nice nursing classes on the second floor. All right, so for students who are interested in graduate programs, we have several different graduate programs and they also, some of them have concentrations uh, just like the undergraduate. So we have business administration, we have executive business administration, uh, child development, criminal justice, ecology and sustainability, education, English, genetic counseling, geospatial analysis, history, interdisciplinary studies, marine science, nursing, psychology, public administration, and social work. We also have one doctoral program, which is educational leadership, and it's an EDD program. When you're looking at our graduate programs, always look at the program page. You're going to get the most accurate and up-to-date information on there. It's also going to have the most detail about the program that you're interested in. So the application deadlines for many of these departments are set by the department and will be listed on their page. So you'll just need to make sure that you're monitoring that and they'll have a list of all the documents that you'll need to submit in order to apply for their programs. Alright, so the next slide is fees and costs, which I know is a big concern for students. Um, like I said before, Stan State is very affordable com compared to other state institutions. So we have our fees broken down to, into four different categories, tuition and fees, books, course materials, room and meals, health insurance. And these are all estimations and the fees include a whole academic year. So you're looking at costs for fall and spring semester, not just one semester. And the prices that we um, went by to establish this, like on-campus housing, we did an average of the most expensive cost and the cheapest cost and came to the conclusion of that. And we also, it's an estimation on the book fees and the insurance. So, you know, there's, it's just an estimation, so keep that in mind. So for the English language program, tuition for two semesters is approximately $8,980. The books and material estimation is approximately $700. And then the room and meals is $9,508, which is also going to be the same for all undergraduate, graduate, and graduate MBA programs, that's the estimated cost for room and meals on those. Genetic counseling is a little bit different because most of the courses are in San Francisco. Um, health insurance is also across the board as $605. So if you're looking at the English language program for one academic year, your estimated cost is going to be $20,793. With the undergraduate and graduate and graduate MBA programs, you pay cost per unit. So the minimum requirement for undergraduates is 12 units. So your estimated tuition cost and fees is going to be approximately $16,008. For graduate students, it's going to be $15,162. And the graduate MBA program for $20,166. 
So take that all into consideration. If you take more credits, it's going to be approximately more. Um, you'll just need to calculate, and if you want to contact me, we can talk about that together. So the overall undergraduate estimated cost is $28,901, and that's for two academic semesters. The graduate program is approximately $28,055, and the graduate MBA program is $33,059. And this is one of our six beautiful lakes we have all over campus that gives our university a park-like feel. They're actually really beautiful, and they're all over campus. And because of the lakes, the different lakes, we have a lot of different um, animals on campus. We have a lot of different ducks and geese and I mean they just make it feel very <laughs> park-like. It's absolutely, I love it. So, Okay, so admission types. We offer four different admission types. We have English language program, conditional admission, undergraduate admission, and graduate admission. Application to our English language program requires students to submit our application a uh, $150 application fee, unofficial English proficiency score report if the student has it, um, financial statement and a copy of the student's passport. Application deadlines for the English language program are December 15th for the spring term and July 15th for the fall term. Conditional admission is available for students who would like to earn their bachelor's or undergraduate degree but have not yet obtained the necessary English score. The necessary English score for conditional admission is a minimum of 32 on the internet-based TOEFL, 400 on the paper-based, or a minimum of 4.5 band score on the IELTS. Students must submit all of the documents for the English language program application as well as a CSU mentor application, a $55 application fee, uh, their official TOEFL or IELTS scorecard, and their high school transcripts if they've had any undergraduate transcripts or had any sort of undergraduate education, they'll also have to submit those official transcripts as well. Undergraduate admission is available for students who would like to earn a bachelor's degree in one of our 40 majors. Like the conditional admission applicant, students will need to submit a CSU mentor application, $55 application fee, their official TOEFL IELTS scorecard, their official high school and any undergraduate transcripts, a financial statement, and a copy of the student's passport. The necessary English score for undergraduate admission is a minimum of 61 with part scores of 15 on the internet-based TOEFL, 500 with part scores of 50 on the paper-based TOEFL, or a minimum of a 6.0 with part scores of 6 on the IELTS. Graduate admissions are for students who have already received a bachelor's degree. Like the conditional admission applicants, students will need to submit a CSU mentor application, $55 application fee, their official TOEFL IELTS scorecard, their official undergraduate transcripts. If the, four, if the undergraduate transcripts are from countries other than the United States, uh, the students will have to get credential evaluations done on those and uh, they'll have to submit financial statement and a copy of their passport. The necessary English score for graduate admission is a minimum of 80 with part scores of 20 reading, 19 listening, and 16 in writing for the internet-based TOEFL. 550 with part scores of 54 on the paper-based TOEFL or a minimum of 6.5 with part scores of 6 on their IELTS. Each graduate program may have additional document requirements for their application. Some graduate programs also have application deadlines that differ from the standard application deadline. All future gr graduate students are encouraged to explore the program page of the degree they are interested in and applying uh, in order to get the most information on their admission requirements. The application deadlines for conditional undergraduate and graduate applications are June 1st for fall and November 1st for the spring. You can apply for any of our programs going to our website at www.csustan.edu oie or emailing us at 
international student, I-N-T-L-S-T-U-D-E-N-T, at stansdate.edu to receive additional information. And here is additional contact information. You can contact us at our physical address, which is Office of International Education, California State University Stanislaus, 1 University Circle, Turlock, California, 95382. You're welcome to call us at country code 1-209-667-3117, or you can at country code 1-209-667-3117. 3791. You can also follow us on Instagram at Stan State International or on Facebook at backslash Stan State International. And thank you for listening to our webinar. We hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, uh, Brittany. It, it's really good information which we have received. Um, so before I take a questions from the students, um, I, I'll 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 start one small poll okay so okay. Uh, everybody can uh, participate in this poll and just let us know okay i'm just launching the poll okay Okay, the meantime, the uh, students are participating in the poll. Uh, the students uh, who have any questions regarding uh, the programs or the fees or scholarships, feel free to ask your question so that we can start taking, uh, oh, I can see there are around more than 12 questions. We already have it. Um, but yeah, whatever the other questions you have, please feel free to write it down here so that I can, I can get it from the, um, from the delegates okay so uh, i'll start taking the first questions um Betty, are you ready to take the questions uh, yes i'm ready okay so the first question asked by the parat sk tank uh he's the student uh his question is what about the part-time job offered by the college the potential of what the part-time job uh for the international students Oh, we have uh, several different places on campus that students are welcome to apply. Uh, any position that's available on campus for uh, student workers, international students are able to apply just like American students. So a lot of students will apply. Um, I, we actually have an international student working in the library. We have students who work with housing. They work with uh, on-campus dining. There's several different positions and departments that they're eligible to apply for. So there are employment opportunities. Okay. So uh, they can work 20 hours per week, right, on campus? Right. Per, per semester, uh, their visa status will only allow them to work 20 hours a week during the semester. But if the department approves it and the student is interested, uh, there's the possibility of working 40 hours during winter or summer breaks. Okay, that is under CPT? No, as long as it's on campus, that they can that fits within their immigration requirements and it doesn't go under CPT. Okay, okay. Uh, we have the second question from the Redepa Reddy that, hello sir, what are the master degrees provided in the college? The master's degrees? Yep. Okay, we have business administration, child development, criminal justice, ecology and sustainability, education, English, genetic counseling, geospatial analysis, history, inter interdisciplinary studies, Marine science, nursing, psychology, public administration, and social work. Okay, great. Uh, I can see uh, Kanika asked that uh, you want to ask so many questions. So Kanika, you can feel feel free to uh, write it down. Whatever the questions you have, I'll ask to the uh, I'll ask to the university delegates. So uh, another question asked that uh, what about the availability of necessary things around the campus? Is everything easily available surrounding the campus? 
Yes, yes. Everything on campus, you can walk from one end to the other in probably 15 minutes. And so everything's very centrally located. In the center, we have what we call the quad, which is a very open space. And from the quad, you can see most uh, buildings on campus. There's a few that are a little bit farther away or are blocked by other buildings. But, I mean, it's very centrally located. It, everything's very walkable, accessible. I actually live not far from campus, and during the week, I don't use my car. So I walk every day to work. I walk all around campus. I walk to the grocery store. It's everything's very convenient and close. Okay. Uh, the other question asked by the same student that uh, what are the um, what are the companies uh, eager to give a jobs those students who pass out from the same university? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Uh, the question is that uh, how many other MNCs comes for the recruitment on campus, the students who are studying for undergraduate and graduate? Um, we have several different major companies around the area. We have um, Gallo Wine, Hillmar Cheese. Students in the past have done internships there. Um, we're also not far from the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland, uh, Berkeley. We also are fairly close to Stockton and stuff, so students will often go to those areas if they're interested and do internships there. But for the most part, there are several different companies around Turlock and in our community that students are able to do internships with. Okay. Uh, uh, the another student asked the question that uh, compared to the uh, Cal State Long Beach uh, and your university, what is the main difference which you which you think? Um, <laughs> academically, I, I'm not real familiar with Long Beach's programs and curriculum and stuff like that. But um, just from like the atmosphere and the environment. In Long Beach, I've actually not been on their campus, but I have been in Long Beach. And it's very close to LA. There's a lot of traffic, but it's really close to the beach. Turlock is what I feel like is a great place for students to study during the week because it's very quiet. It's very much a family community. And then we're so close to San Francisco and Oakland and Monterey and the coast and the mountains that on weekends you're easily able to drive a short distance somewhere and go and do something different and have you know be a tourist for a little bit or just just get out of Turlock and go to a concert in the Bay Area or something like that so I really just feel like during uh, the semester and during the week Stan State is very conducive to studying but then you're also able to get the excitement of a city or the mountains or hiking or whatever you want to do on the weekends in close proximity. Um. Okay, we have a student, uh, Shua Yang Tishmo. Uh, his question is scholarships, opportunity, and requirement for the undergraduate. It, a requirement? Uh, the scholarships opportunity for the undergraduate students and okay so right now uh, we just started a scholarship for students and um, after students have been enrolled for one academic year they're they're eligible to apply and uh, the possibility to be awarded a thousand dollars for the next academic year so it'd be five hundred dollars each semester the students can apply for that scholarship and we will do our best to award as many students as possible. Okay, so now we have the result for our first uh, poll uh, where you can see that 67% of the students in this webinar attendees, they want to apply for the graduate program. 19% mm -hmm. we have for the undergraduate and uh, uh, I think by myself. <laughs> And luckily, there is no students are interested for the ESL, but we have the 15% for the others. So hopefully, they are looking for the doctorate program or any kind of diploma or certificates program. 
so it's good okay. to know uh, the uh, result of the our first poll so i'm just launching the uh, the second poll also uh, in the meantime i'll take it um, uh, i'll take it the other questions also which we have but the students you can participate in the second poll and i'm taking the more questions from our students Okay. So uh, the other question asked by the Jad, he sit in our Bangalore office only. He's our counselor. So he asked that, what is the duration of EMBA program? Uh, it's the same as the MBA program. Okay. So, so it's actually what? It is like two years or one point five year. The MBA program typically it's two years but depending on how many units if students take the minimum uh, n number of required units per semester it'd be two years but if they took more than that they could graduate faster okay uh, we have the uh, second question come from Praveen he's or also counselor sit in the same location his question is that uh, please explain MS in genetics counseling program um, that's a very specific and specialized major. So I would recommend you referring to their website because I'm afraid to say anything and give you wrong information. But if you uh, feel free to contact me through the email that we posted earlier and I can send you a direct link to their program page. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have another question uh, from the student Krunal that what is the application fee for MBA? The application fee for undergraduate and graduate programs is $55. Okay. The same student asked the question that uh, he want to apply uh, for the Jan intake, Jan 2017, and, but mm -hmm. he does not have a GMAT with him. So is he eligible for the MBA program without the GMAT? You'll need to look on the program page because every graduate program is different some require the GRE some require the GMAT and some don't require either so it's very program specific in terms of whether they require that if you want to contact me through email uh, we can contact the department together and find out specific information about that Okay, um, the, the same students ask the question that do you accept the three years degree or it should be the four years bachelor degree, I mean to say applying for the master program? It depends on the degree in the university. So whenever a student applies with foreign transcripts, they'll get a credential evaluation and then we'll use that to determine whether or not... Um, they would be able to apply. It's sent to an evaluator. I don't actually evaluate the transcripts. Okay, so do we have any internal team for the evaluation or the students have to do the VAS or NACS accreditation member? Yeah, well, we have an internal evaluator for um, the undergraduate admission process and we do have graduate level evaluators but they require for graduate students to get the credential evaluation. So that could be an ACE or a West report or uh, there's several different ones that we accept. And so if you go to our admissions page where you complete the application, we actually have a link to the list of credential evaluation programs or agencies that can evaluate your transcript that we accept. Okay. Kronal, I just seen the MB requirement. They require the GMAT uh, for the MBA program. So better you can write down the GMAT uh, if you're looking for the September. Uh, sorry, for the spring intake. So mm -hmm. we have Hiran Patel, the another question, another student. Uh, her question was that I have ILTS 5.5 and GRE 282, where the verbal is 148 and the quant is 134. I'm eligible for master program. So it's again, it's a very specific question. Right. Like I said before, I'm not the one that evaluates and make the admission decision. So I wouldn't be able to determine that. 
okay here and what you can do that you can send an email to your transcripts and your gr in ielts score the uh, to admission at studymetro.com so uh, we will check internally with the uh, universities and then we will get back to you within a 48 hours that uh, you are eligible or not for the graduate program in the same university so um, uh, this this uh, remind me one question which i have for you that um, uh, let's say if the students are applying for the English uh, uh, ESL program, uh, which which we have, do they require uh, uh, to have any IELTS and TOEFL scores, or else they can start, they can apply ESL, and then after that they can choose undergraduate undergraduate program. So if if they came for if they were interested in participating in the English language program only. They would not be required to submit um, an English score, but we would make them do a placement test once they arrive to see what level they would be in. Uh, if they wanted to apply for conditional admission, which would be to participate in the ELP program prior to starting their undergraduate study, they would have to submit an official uh, IELTS or TOEFL scorecard because they can't be conditionally admitted without having the minimum requirements for that condition and um, they would also like they as they're applying for the English language program they would also be applying for the university so they would need to submit all that documentation together okay so let me correct if I'm wrong I understood that uh, if the students only looking for the uh, ELP program then they don't have to uh, submit any IELTS and TOEFL score but again mm -hmm. if they want to get the conditional letter or if they want to start the any undergraduate undergraduate program they have to submit the IELTS and TOEFL right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes okay 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 that's fine so um, um, uh, another question asked by Dimple that GRE GMAT is course requirement for the graduate program. I think we have mentioned that we required few of the programs required the GRE and GMAT for the graduate, but the score is missing. So what kind of score are you looking forward for the, from the international students? What, what score? Um, GMAT or GRE score. Okay. So for I know for the business program, I know they do require the GRE or GMAT. Uh, I don't actually know what specific score they're looking for when students take that, but they look at the whole application. So the GRE score might, you know, if it's... They, they look at the whole application. It's not just, oh, they don't have the GRE score. It's They look at the GRE score, they look at the student's resume, their statement, their transcripts, their English scores. They look at the whole package. Okay, okay. We have another student. Uh, her name is Kavita Khumsi, that she's having GRE of 280 and she's looking for MS in Computer Science. Okay, we, we don't have an MS in computer science. Okay, do we have any related programs like uh, cyber security or data science or something for the students who are looking for the IT or computer science? No, we do have like a, I think the possibly the geospatial analysis program, possibly. I know there's like a collaborative master's degree with the geography depar department and um, other departments on campus and usually they use um, technology to help like mapping and stuff like that but that's about as close as we get to that. Okay, we have another question asked by Shakti Well that is any bachelor's in mechanical program is available? If yes, what is a set requirement? In in what programs? Bachelor's in mechanical. Mechanical? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, the one co one question asked by Saurabh that uh, do you want the recording of this webinar? Yep. the The session is recorded. 
and uh, we are like we are doing the recording of this session so we will share with you uh, by monday through email uh, so uh, elinda we have one question from elinda that what are the doctorate programs are available in our university we have educational leadership doctorate okay we have another question i think from piyush he is from bangalore only uh, that do we have ms in mis program and how about the scholarships option um we don't have an mis program okay okay so i'll move to the another question that uh uh abdul asked the question about the tuition fee of uh, uh, he doesn't mention for undergraduate and graduate so abdul i think you, if you can mention about uh, which program you are looking but generally he's looking for the tuition fee uh, uh in our university okay um it, for having to let me pull it up real quick so for tuition fees for the english language program is $8,980 for one academic year so that's fall and spring semesters for undergraduate if a student takes 12 units each semester for one academic year it's going to be sixteen thousand and eight dollars for the gra graduate program if the student takes the minimum requirement which is eighteen units they would the tuition would be fifteen thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars for the graduate MBA program if the student took eighteen units for two semesters it would be approximately twenty thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars Okay, so it's all, all the uh, all the uh, the tuition fee which you said this is for one year, right? Right, right. So that would be for the fall and spring semester of that year. Okay, uh, we have another question asked by the Banita that does university have agreement or partnerships with the other universities abroad so the students can spend a semester or uh, in a, a year in another country. Yeah, we have several uh, study abroad programs that are eligible for students. One of them is through CSUIP, which is through the Chancellor's Office. Like I said earlier in our PowerPoint, we are part of the 23 campus CSU system. And so the Chancellor's Office has exchange programs where students can study in other universities overseas for one year. And so they're eligible to apply for any of the programs that they're interested in and fits with their major and so that's totally a possibility okay okay so uh, the bhavin patel asked the question uh, uh, i think i will answer on this question he asked the question that how long i can stay under the f1 visa category and um, if i didn't get a job because of my company doesn't hire the h1b candidate so bhavin your question is that that uh, the duration of the f1 uh, it depend on which kind of programs you are applying so generally if you are applying for the undergraduate that means you can stay for four years and uh, if you are applying for the master program you can stay for the two years again you have the opt that is called optional practical training which allowed you at least for the one year to stay after your mm -hmm. studies if you are applying for the stem program then you have another uh, 24 months extension so altogether, you can stay three years after your studies. So the F1 provide you the five years of visa by default, but the duration is depend on the, the program which you are offering. You also mentioned about the H1B. Uh, yeah, the most of the students they look for the H1B after their studies. So that is again depend on the what what, what kind of employer you have uh, who are ready to sponsor you. We have the team sitting uh, in the USA. His name is Michael. He take care about the um, the job placement and the uh, and the internships in the IT companies and all. So we we uh, always help you if in the future if you want any kind of sponsor who can offer you the H one B or the green card in the future. 
so um, now we have the question from the Saurabh Kumar that how much of the value and recognition and the scope your university has in the area of the research? I'm sorry, I'm confused by the question. <laughs> okay, uh, the, <laughs> the student asked the question that how much uh, of the value and the recognition and the scope uh, your university have in the area of the research? It really depends on the academic program that the student pursues, um, and it depends on the student. So, if you know you're in an area of study and you talk to your professor, and you know professors are very personable, they're approachable, and they're willing to work with you. So you can always approach them and ask them if you can work on a research project or something like that with them or even independently and try to get academic credit for it to count towards your major. So it's, you know, it's really up to you as the student and you as the professor and you can take that as far as you want between the two of you. Okay, now we have the second poll result available. So uh, you can see in your screen that most of the students, like 52% of students want to apply for the spring intake. So that is a really good news that most of the mm -hmm. students are looking for the upcoming intake. Then we have 7% for the summer and 17% for the fall and 10% for the spring 2018. The 14% of students has not yet decided, but I hope you will decide soon and apply to our partner universities. So um, mm -hmm. before I launch my third uh, uh, poll, the last poll, I'll take uh, another two and three questions and then I'll launch the, my third poll. So we have the Bhavin Patel and uh, his question is that I have 295 with GRE, seven band in ILTS, but 30 backlogs. Will you accept um, me in academics program in the graduation? Again, I am not an evaluator, so I wouldn't be able to determine whether you'd be accepted or not. Okay, so uh, do you have any idea that how ma maximum backlogs you will accept? It, it's really program specific. I know with uh, our nursing program and genetic counseling and our psychology programs, they only accept so many students into their program, whereas with the MBA program, uh, they don't have a cap. So it really just depends on the program that you're interested in applying for. Okay. So I just launched my last poll. You can see in your screen. Please take a participate so that we have the exact value uh, um, here. So, okay. Uh, Kritika asked the question, is there any GPA requirement? Um, typically, it's a at least a minimum of a 2.0 but like I said before the evaluator looks at the whole application okay uh, uh, the next question asked by Mostafa do we do you have the PhD programs we do not we only have the educational doctorate okay um, Steve you just mentioned hi so I would um, I would appreciate if you have any questions, you can write it down here. So the next question asks that if the student is looking for the conditional letter, then what is the minimum ILTS and TOEFL score? So I think Dimple, we answer that uh, we do not require any ILTS TOEFL if you're only looking for the uh, ESL program. But yes, specifically, if you look for the conditional letter, uh, we, sh we have to get uh, any minimum score. So do, do you have any minimum score if the students look for the conditional letter? Yes, for the, the conditional admission, the student must have a 32 on the IBT TOEFL, the internet-based, or 400 on the paper-based, or 4.5 band score on the IELTS. Okay. Uh, Varun asked the question again, what is the minimum GRE score for the master? So Varun, we, uh, we mentioned it depends on the programs. The another question asked by Redepa Reddy that do you have MS Mechanical and the Robotics? Sorry, we don't have in this university. We can offer you the other uh, other partner universities uh, once you send your documents that again depend on the GRE and your ILTS scorecard. What other universities you can get that mission? 
the another question asked by the if the students is having any backlogs can we apply for the master programs and the maximum backlogs yeah as, as we mentioned before that backlogs is depend um, we don't have any exact figure but yeah we have to do the evaluation first to see how many maximum backlogs we can accept the phd we don't have the abdul asked the question the bs and mechanical looking for admission and diploma <coughs> Okay, the Abdul have asked the question um, uh, that uh, he has already finished the BS in mechanical, but now he's looking for the one year diploma program. So do we offer any diploma for the international students? What, what kind of diploma? It's, it's a one year uh, diploma, uh, uh, so diploma certification uh, apart from the graduate and undergraduate, undergraduate program. Uh, not that I'm familiar with. Okay. So, Abdul, we will get back to you if we have any diploma programs for the one year. So, uh, the Koshik asked the question that I'm a 35 years old. Still, can I apply for the student visa? Will my age make difficulty to get the visa? No. Yeah. So, generally, Koshik, that uh, most of uh, the, the U.S. education, there's no barrier for the uh, your... Sorry, I have a So uh, for the U.S. education, there was there is no uh, uh, age limit. Okay, so the students can apply anytime. We have sent the maximum age of the student that is 48 years for the graduate program. We also send uh, the student his age is 38 for the undergraduate program, and both the got, both the students got the visa. So there is no issue with the visa, and there is no issue with the getting the admission also. So. Um, um, I, I think we uh, most of the students already take a participate in the third poll. So I'll just I'll just uh, give you the result also. The result is very good. So 27% of the people give us the 10 out of 10. Nine, 27% uh, people they give a 9 out of 10. 8, 20% uh, give us 8 out of 10 and 20% are given the 7 out of 10. I'm just worrying about the last one, 6 out of 10 seven person have given so we will improve ourselves and then we will make sure that we will get uh, more than uh, this one also uh, right. so uh, it's, it's it's a really good uh, we had uh, uh, good students who has given us uh, uh, and you like the webinar also so that is again good but yeah you can uh, have any feedback for us please feel free to write uh, write it down in the chat box window so we'll try our level best to uh, to include your ideas uh, in our upcoming webinars. So thank, uh, I think we had almost all the questions, uh, but still we have few questions because we are running out of time now. So it's already one hour we started the webinar and uh, you uh, most of the students will be surprised. It's, it's early morning, uh, 6 a.m. I guess right now in the California where our delegates are speaking with you so she has started around 4 30 uh, with us so it's early morning only had one coffee so i knew it's very <laughs> difficult <laughs> to <laughs> come up the online and speaking with the indian students but we would appreciate everybody appreciate uh, your efforts and uh, we, we 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 want to say uh, the big thank you to you to give us the, your valuable time to our staff and all our students in India. Yeah, I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity and taking the time to listen to me. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at intlstudent at csustand.edu. Yep, yeah, we will do that. Thank you very much a lot. I guess we have uh, got a, a message from the students also. Thank you very much for this wonderful webinar. So thanks all the students also who joined uh, this webinar. I know this is a Friday late evening and you everybody having a weekend's plan. Uh, but uh, don't forget us to call if you have any questions uh, at 8088-867-867 and feel free to write to our admission team that is admission at studymatter.com. So thanks everybody. Bye bye for now, and we will let you know soon uh, for the, our upcoming webinars. Thank you very much, all.